Hi, I'm Kim Alds, and today I'm doing a book talk on The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. It's fiction, fantasy, 189 pages, great read for middle schoolers. It's all about four siblings, Peter, Edmund, Susan, and Lucy, who are sent away from the city of London into the country to stay with a professor during the air raids. Lucy finds a wardrobe that leads to the land of Narnia in the house. When she gets there, she meets Mr. Tumnus, the fawn, who tells her all about Narnia and the White Witch, who makes it always winter, but never Christmas. Then she finds out that Mr. Tumnus is actually in the White Witch's employment, and he was supposed to capture her, but he winds up setting her free. She goes back and none of her siblings believe her. Edmund, her brother, is particularly mean to her until he winds up in Narnia himself. But he doesn't meet Mr. Tumnus. He meets the White Witch herself. And she feeds him Turkish delights and sweets and charms him right into coming back with all of his siblings so that she can capture human children. Well, he goes back home, but he does not tell them about going to Narnia. Later in the story, all four of them wind up in Narnia together, where Edmund is forced to admit that he's been there, but he does not tell them about the White Witch. Lucy leads them to Mr. Tumnus's house, where they find out he's been arrested for letting her go. So they don't know what to do, and then some woodland creatures lead them to Mr. and Mrs. Beaver's house, where they tell him, them all about Narnia, the White Witch, and Aslan, who is going to save all of Narnia and break the spell of winter when he comes. I'm going to read you an important part of the story where they learn who Aslan is. Who is Aslan? asks Susan. Aslan? asks Mr. Beaver. Why don't you know? He's the king. He's the lord of the whole wood. But not often here, you understand. Never in my time or my father's time. But the word has reached us that he has come back. He is in Narnia at this moment. He'll settle the White Queen all right. It is he, not you, that will save Mr. Tumnus. She won't turn him into stone too, said Edmund. Lord love you, son of Adam. What a simple thing to say, answered Mr. Beaver with a great laugh. Turn him into stone? If she can stand on her two feet and look him in the face, It'll be the most she can do, and more than I expect of her. No, no. He'll put it all to rights, as it says in an old rhyme in these parts. Wrong will be right when Aslan is, comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bears his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. You'll understand when you see him. But shall we see him? asks Susan. Why, daughter of Eve, that's what I brought you here for. I'm to lead you where you shall meet him, said Mr. Beaver. Is, is he a man? asked Lucy. Aslan, a man, said Mr. Beaver sternly. Certainly not. I tell you, he is the king of the wood and the son of the great emperor beyond the sea. Don't you know who is the king of beasts? Aslan is a lion, the lion, the great lion. And then things get really exciting because they discover that Edmund has run off to tell the White Witch all about Aslan and that his siblings are here. And now they have to rescue their traitor brother as well. I give this book five out of five stars. I think everyone should read it.